Have you ever watched a music video and it feel like a visual circus? Like every second is packed with more effects than a Marvel movie. Well, in this video, we're gonna break down why your editing software doesn't need to be on steroids. Imagine this, come and dream with me for a second. You're watching a new music video by your favorite artist. Maybe it's Drake, Taylor Swift, whoever it is, they've released a new single and we're getting invested in the song into the music video, but it just begins to get overwhelming. So overwhelming, in fact, that it feels more like an ad for the plugins and the software than the actual artist himself. Spoiler alert, that's not a good thing. So in this video, we're gonna unpack the wild world of over editing and how sometimes keeping it simple can make your video and song shine brighter than just your effects library. So if we're gonna start debunking crappy edits, we need to go to the root of the problem understanding the heart of editing. So let's get one thing straight. Editing isn't about showing how many effects you can cram in 30 seconds. It's about telling a story that enhances the song, not about drowning it in a sea of lens flares and sparkles. Your edits should feel like it's a dance with the music, not like it's a boxing match. If your viewers are feeling like they're being bombarded with effects, you're already losing them. For my own editing style, I like to think of myself as a bit of a chameleon, always there, present, but never drawing unwanted attention to itself. Recently, I've seen too many music videos where the editor has lost complete focus of the track. You gotta remember that this was never about you. This project was always about enhancing and complementing what the artist has already brought to the table. The editing and the effects of the video should fit the song. So at the end of the day, people love the track that little bit more. It should never be about forcing your effects to fit the track. So if you find yourself throwing in every trick in the book just because you can, you'll end up looking like a one trick pony who has just as much depth as a puddle. Effects are like walking through a store full of lollies. I get it, I've got a bit of a sweet tooth. You see all those shiny effects and think, I've got to have them all. But just like eating too many sweets, you're gonna make your videos and your viewers sick. Picture this, you're at a fancy restaurant and the chef decides to dump every single spice he has in the kitchen onto your plate. Sure, it's flavorful, but is it enjoyable? Not at all. The same concept applies to your videos. Keep it tasteful. And look, the pros aren't out here trying to win most effects used in a single music video awards. They're creating cinematic masterpieces that let the music breathe. So take notes. Look, not all effects are bad especially if it's your personal brand or your style. If we pull up some of my own videos I've directed, you can see I'm no stranger to effects. And to be truthful, one of my favorite music videos I've ever done is completely 100% visual effects. There is not a single second in that music video that hasn't been modified or altered in some way. But the key detail, the difference, is that the music called for it. The reason it works in this video is because it was the entire creative theme. Going this intense on effects in this music video was not just an afterthought to cover up bad shots or bad performances from the artist. I've directed and edited over 100 music videos and have they all been perfect? No, I've been a little too trigger happy sometimes with effects and it shows. Sometimes those videos in the past look like very bad acid trips. And what was the lesson learned there? Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Scaling back effects was like taking off sunglasses indoors. I could finally see clearly. And guess what? It's these videos that have connected with audiences in ways that they wouldn't have otherwise. Over editing is like that one friend at a party. He just talks and talks and talks over everybody else, gets really annoying and completely misses the point. Don't be that guy. I'm gonna give you some practical tips for some emotionally engaging editing. Tip number one, match the heartbeat of the song. Like I've said before, editing is like dancing. You've gotta match the rhythm. Otherwise it's gonna be very awkward. If the song is a slow jam, don't edit it like a Fast and the Furious trailer. Tip number two, use effects with purpose. The biggest question every editor should be asking themselves is what is my intention with this effect? And your answer needs to be more substantial than to make the video look cool. Because like I've said before, your effects should be the seasoning, the little bit of spice on top, not the main course. Tip number three, maintain visual consistency. Why is consistency important? Well, it comes back to creative intention. Without consistency, with just chaos button mashing, you risk giving your viewers whiplash. Now, I'm not saying that your edits should be predictable, but everything should complement each other so it feels like a whole package and not like it was slapped together by too many cooks in the kitchen. If we pull up some of my own videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. 
With the All I Ever Wanted music video with Ryan King featuring Melbourne, this video had practically no effects because the track didn't call for it. It was one of those tracks that just needed a nice color grade and some simple and well executed cuts. This track was very significant to the artists. It came from a much more of an emotional place. So slapping on a bunch of effects that showcase my skill would have taken away from the music video. It would have degraded and distracted the viewer from what the actual song is all about. So instead, we opted to let the location speak for itself to showcase the hood that they speak about so often in the track instead of muddying up the video with my effects. So in contrast, when I worked with Lavez on the That Thing music video, his whole theme was detention. And we wanted to elevate that by using a cyclorama, one desk, and our creative skills. In this video, we didn't have the budget to go and hire out a whole school or a classroom. So what we decided to do instead is play into the cheekiness of the track and use effects to engage the viewer. So by doing crowd duplications of Lavez in different outfits, in different detention scenes, with different paper scrunches, and even shrinking him down and putting him on the very lyrics that he's writing for the song, it's hitting all of the creative marks that blend with the track without being too distracting and showcasing my ego. Now the music video I did with Moses and Tactics for their track What takes it up a notch even further. Their whole concept with this video was they're traveling to half a dozen cities doing half a dozen shows. And we're not really gonna have any downtime to properly schedule a music video. So why not record the entire trip and smash it together into one big montage? If the track was lo-fi chill hip hop beats to study to, the whole concept would have missed. But I'll play you a bit of the video and you'll see that every effect can be justified in one way or another. When I see you on block boy Don't know why I'm sitting in court Like I'm paying for bail When we leave cause we're top boy Pump that pussy She loves sex, coke, google I run it her favourite song is bump and grind Your chick couldn't even try fuck with you whip So I told her to jump in mine Couldn't miss if I wanted to Ain't no apologies We just take over the roster The way that your missus try Hang with the gang all among us You're bitching and bust up Fuck with that the intensity of this track, paired with the theme of running around town to different meet and greets, doing different live shows, and slapping it all together with complementary effects and transitions, works for this video. And to bring it back to one of my favorite videos I've ever done, the nuke that is No Scale by Gursky showcases when effects and the song go hand in hand more perfectly than anyone could have imagined. We were heavily inspired by the music video Autumn by Dotcom Nirvan, and put our own creative spin on it. I don't even know what genre you'd call Gursky's track, but the distortion and the vocals and the absolute chaos that is the track needed that from the video. So by spending 60 hours worth of time to rotoscope him out of the background and put him in whatever scene we could both come up with, it worked. We were able to let our imaginations run wild, I got to showcase my skill, and he got to be ecstatic with the results. As the video, and the song married perfectly together. When intention is left unchecked, over editing occurs and it can turn your music video into just visual noise. And last I checked, noise wasn't on anybody's playlist. So to keep your audience hooked, you need to make sure that they're actually watching the music video and not just the highlight reel of your skills. More effects don't always equate to a better video. They can sometimes lead to distractions, which pulls the viewer out of the moment. Remember, you're here to serve the vision of the artist and your joint collaboration, not just your own ego. The music videos that resonate with audiences aren't using gimmicks. Your viewers can tell when you're trying too hard. It's authenticity that sticks, not how many effects you can fit into a chorus. So to wrap things up, if you wanna keep your client out of the hospital from an epileptic fit, the best directors and editors know that subtlety in effects leaves a stronger impact. It's not about showing everything that you can do, it's about showing just enough to leave a lasting impact. So next time you're about to lock in for an editing sesh, just ask yourself, am I serving the song or am I flexing my editing muscles and my ego? Because trust me, the answer matters and it will change everything. So if you've been guilty of giving a little bit too much editing love, don't worry, we've all been there. Drop a like and share your editing horror stories in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and until then, I'll see you in the next one.